hello everyone. I'm Nicola Delia from CMS, which is an international firm. I will be speaking about the technological issues around the InsurTech world. Uh, we see that the increasing use of technolo technological system as entail and still, you know, entailing what uh, we can call a revolution in the entire insurance industry, affecting the creation phase of an insurance product of the type of services provided by such product. And by uh, the, the way it is distributed, uh, the customer relationship, the relation, the claims management, meaning how the claim is handled, which includes settlement, payment, activity related to a claim. And this phenomenal, uh, phenomenon also has uh, invaluable impacts on the legal regulatory profile. In fact, although it is obvious, it is uh, fundamental to bear in mind that the insurance market is a regulated market and both the regulator in Italy and across the EU as well as the supervisory authority for each country like in Italy is IVAS and the, the um, bodies across Europe, like EOPA, are called open to carefully analyze this particular phenomenon and to regulate this new aspect and to establish a, a dialogue between the traditional and the new player of this market. In fact, in this sense, EOPA has set up a special task force on InsurTech with the aim of analyzing the market trend at the European level and dictating guidelines in relation to the insurtech phenomenon. Similarly, at the national level, uh, for the first time, a regulatory sandbox has been set up to dialogue with insurtech and more generally with the fintech players in order to test innovative solutions. This is, as I mentioned, as a, an unprecedented situation uh, in which the regulators have been open to engage with insurance players. One of the most significant consequences, in, our, in my opinion, of the digital evolution in the insurance industry is the entrance of untraditional players in the insurance market. The first type of players are related to companies that are supporting insurers also in the so-called essential activities like underwriting, like claims uh, management uh, and, and so on and so forth. And the other one is related to big companies which do not carry out insurance activity as their core business. Uh, for instance, uh, mobile phone telecommunication companies, car manufacturers, banks, uh, they deciding to act as insurance intermediaries, selling to their customers uh, insurance products via their website or their retail store, as is used in the past. Such, such companies are usually not licensed to perform insurance activity, and, and so they are not enrolled in the RUI, which is the EVA register for the intermediary, as you know. Consequently, one of the regulatory issues that we face, more, or that this company face most often and closely related to the insurtech phenomenon and the, uh, the entry of the new players in the insurance market is to identify a delimited regulated area. To answer to this question, it is necessary to look first at the definition, in our opinion, of the insurance distribution, which is provided by Article 2, Paragraph 1, Letter Q, or EVAS Regulation 40, 2018, as well as the IDD Regulation. This provision stated that it is considered insurance distribution any activity consisting in providing advice on insurance contracts, proposing insurance contracts or performing other preparatory acts related to their conclusion, concluding insurance contracts or assisting particularly in the event of a claim, in the claims management and the execution of a claim. Alongside with this definition, it's also important, which we recall was codified in 2016, it's also important, and prior to, sorry, to the development of the InsurTech, the EU legislator and, the legislator and consequently the Italian regulator, in transponding the IDD, have provided for a sort of friend zone in which the distribution of this insurance product is allowed outside the regulated area. 
meaning that to mediate insurance product without the need to be registered in the RUI and be supervised by EVAS, so before. More specifically, the legislator provided the so-called connected contract exemption, which are listed in Article uh, 107, Paragraph 4 of the Insurance Code, and in Article 1, Paragraph 3 of the IDD. This provision basically allows companies under specific conditions to distribute products on an ancillary basis without being enrolled in the RUI, meaning without, again, an insurance license. Such conditions shall be jointly met, and these, these are the insurers shall be ancillary to a product or a service and shall cover the risk of loss, deterioration, damage to the product supplied, or the non use of the service provided by the suppliers, or the loss uh, of or damage to luggage or other risk associated with the journey booked with that supplier. The amount of the annual premium paid for the insurance contract shall not exceed 600 euros, or where the insurance is supplementary to a service which lasts three months or less, the premium shall not exceed 200 euros. Once the limited deregulated area, the new players might decide if they wish or could act under this exemption, or on contrary, if they prefer to be enrolled to EVAS register. While in the past we have seen companies tended to prefer the first option, in recent years, in our opinion, we have noticed that um, as we lead the insurance sector, an increase in these companies which want to enter into regulated areas. We have therefore been assisting such companies to obtain a license, which includes, for instance, the need to carry out a training course in advance. This has been influenced by the recognition uh, by them of having enormous power, which is customer data, as, as well as by the technology evolution, which has extended the range of insurance product at the click of a mouse, uh, and you know, not purely related to their main business, and therefore has led this company to consider the sales, the sale of insurance product no longer as you know, marginal activities. Uh, my important activity in combination with the sale of other goods or services and within the limits of uh, the uh, Article 107 we mentioned before. But uh, as an enormous addition branch of business, autonomous with, sorry, with an autonomous branch of business, nonetheless, the enrollment in the EVAS register might bring for further issues, such as, for example, issues arising from the impossibility of such company to be enrolled as collaborator or intermediary authorized to operate on the freedom of services. At this particular point, it, has, it should be noted that even register contain different sections, as you might know, in which companies are enrolled, depending on the type of intermediary, uh, at the type of intermediary perform activity for, like agent, broker, financial intermediary. And then the intermediaries may operate under the freedom of services regime or under the um, uh, establishment regime. In the latter case, they need to have registered office or at least a branch in Italy. Now, companies that do not carry out prevalently brokerage activity or more generally insurance activ uh, activities are normally registered in section A by other intermediary as they call external collaborators. On this regard, I think it's important to uh, remark that Regulation 97 2020 has forbidden intermediary, this type of intermediary license to operate under the freedom of services regime to enroll a collaborator. So they often represent a key issue related to insure tax sector in which the uh, offer of insurance product is categorized of high degree of traditionality, since foreign intermediaries are forced now to set up a branch in Italy if they wish to cooperate with such tech company uh, in the distribution of insurance products.